Look at that beautiful loaf of bread. Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Today we're gonna to be whipping up a crusty loaf of bread. This is the easiest bread recipe to throw together. If you're new to bread baking, this is the recipe for you. If you're a seasoned bread baker, this recipe is still absolutely fantastic and it takes minutes, minutes to throw together. We're gonna to start with one and a half cups of warm water. This is one of those recipes you have to be careful if you start making it and bringing it to family gatherings because they're gonna ask you to make it every single time. We're gonna put three and a quarter cups of flour in our bowl. Two teaspoons of salt. A half teaspoon of yeast. I have my Danish dough whisk and we're gonna stir this together. We're not gonna knead this or whisk this. We're just gonna gently stir it together. This is Redmond Real Salt. I do have a discount code for that if you're interested in a salt that's mined in Utah that's not refined at all. That's all we do, literally that easy. This is what we call a shaggy dough. There's still a little bit of flour that's not mixed in, the water and flour is not fully incorporated, but that's okay. This is exactly how we want it. We don't need to knead this or anything. Now that we have our shaggy dough, all we're gonna do is cover it and we're gonna set it aside for 12 to 18 hours. And this is a very forgiving dough. I've had this sit for 24 hours and it still makes a really nice crusty loaf of bread. It's the next day and we are gonna go ahead and shape our loaf and get it baked. It might look a little bit dry on the top, but that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and put some flour down on a piece of parchment paper. We're gonna take our dough and just plop it right on that flour. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start taking our dough and rolling it up on top of itself. And we're gonna continue to do that and pinching it in at the top until we get a really smooth surface and it looks all even on the bottom side. What we're doing is we're trying to organize the gluten structure. Sometimes I'll just flatten it out a little bit to then continue to pinch the tops in. This should only take about a minute or two. We're gonna set this aside again and we're gonna let it rise for 30 minutes. While this is rising, we're gonna move on and we're gonna get our oven prepped and ready to go. I just turned the oven on to 450 degrees and we're gonna put our Dutch oven with a lid in the oven and the Dutch oven and the oven are gonna preheat together. We're gonna let that sit in there for the whole time the bread is rising and then by the time the bread is risen, the oven is gonna be ready for us to bake our bread. It's been a little over 30 minutes. Everything is preheated and risen. Woo, warm. Now, I always keep my pot holder on the top of this because you do not want to grab that without a pot holder. Then we just transfer our bread into our Dutch oven, put the lid back on. And we're gonna bake this for 30 minutes with the lid on it. After it's baked for 30 minutes, we're gonna remove the lid and then we're gonna bake it for an additional 15 minutes to brown up that crust. Let's take this beauty out of the oven and check it. Oh my goodness, friends. Okay. So what I like to do is just check the bottom of it. And I do a little tap tap. And if it feels nice and hollow, it's nice and cooked. All we're gonna do now is let it cool absolutely completely. Bread continues to cook as it cools down. That steam that's trapped into it continues to finish the cooking process of bread. And you don't wanna slice into it before it's cooled unless you're gonna eat the entire loaf in one sitting. If you're gonna eat the entire loaf in one sitting, go ahead, cut into it. Fresh hot bread is fantastic, but if it, cools and you didn't eat the whole thing and you cut into it right when it was hot, then the texture is gonna be gummy and a little bit off. 
the next time you go to eat it. I hope that was encouraging to you how easy it was to make that bread. That bread took me less than five minutes total in actually working with this bread. Obviously, I started this yesterday evening, but the actual working time is minutes and you get this absolutely beautiful crusty loaf of bread and it is phenomenal. Like I mentioned earlier, be careful if you make this for your family because they're gonna ask you to make it multiple times and you're gonna be the person that brings the bread to the family gatherings. And you can do it because this is an easy thing to do. Tonight, I'm gonna make some tomato soup for Josh and I. If you wanna see how I make tomato soup and grilled cheese sandwich, because that's what I'm gonna do with this bread, I can put that video right here and you can enjoy that. If you wanna see what my garden looks like, I'll put a garden video down here where I harvest all the tomatoes that I cook in that tomato soup recipe. If you wanna know where you can find this recipe, it's gonna be at scratchpantry.com, and I hope this encouraged you. If you know anybody that would like to learn how to make their own bread, consider sharing this video with them. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, guys.